Hey everybody and welcome back to the channel. This will be a short video just uh, talking about a little bit of a change. we got a change in the seasons and uh, so I'm going to go over a little bit of a change in uh, what I'm doing uh, for trail riding. This will be in terms of the packs. So back in April I posted a video of um, the Evoke hip pack race, the three liter um, in terms of capacity and then it also had the bladder inside. I got a lot of interesting and constructive feedback you know, on that, and um, uh, lots of views, 4,000 views, which is more than I would have expected on something like this, but I guess there wasn't a lot of content out there. I didn't say good content, I just had some to contribute, and so um, the hip pack race. So I've been running the hip pack race, I rode it in April, you know, I had been riding it through, you know, like from January through April and May, and then uh, when I got to the summer, I switched over to the high above uh, Cascadia things started to get a little bit um, uh, drier out, um, even though this is uh, a bit a bit of a water resistant. I think it's actually waterproof. Um, you can see a little bit of this um, um, sublimated um, or embedded uh, diamond stitching. More on that in one second because I'm going to transition to something else. But I used this uh, through the summer, um, just more of like a garage bag. It's got you know, and there's a review on the of this on my channel as well. Um, when we got out of, uh, the summer and we got back into September, late September, things started to get a little bit wet, September, early October, and all the way through now, it's now mid November or late November. I went back to the Evo hip pack race, uh, uh, mostly because of just the, uh, the, 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 the nylon is more, you know, sloughs off the stuff a little bit easier than the, uh, than the high above. At least that was my, my experience. So um, now it's getting a little bit colder, and uh, we've had some cold days, and so now I'm going to be switching over to um, a pack I've had for a, a few years now, um, at least three, and this is the uh, Acre. It's uh, the off-road offshoot of, uh, not offshoot, the off-road uh, brand of Mission Workshop. I'm a bit of a Mission Workshop fanboy. Um, and so this is the Acre Hauser 14 liter. I haven't done a review of this pack. I will. Um, but interestingly, I just noticed, I just noticed this also has, you know, that diamond stitching, um, sort of embedded within the nylon. Um, I looked on Acre's website, uh, Mission Workshop's website. They don't make this particular bag available anymore. I remember when I bought it, they, they said it was a limited edition, um, finish, um, this color in, in this pattern. I always thought this had like that Bentley-esque, you know, with the diamond stitching that they do on their, on their seats. Uh, and uh, door panels in, in like the Bentley Continental Super Sport and the uh, Flying Spur. Anyway, not a separate video for a separate time because, you know, I don't have a Bentley. Anyway, so the reason I'm switching to this is because as we get into the colder months and, uh, you know, around here, fat biking through the winter, there's a couple things going on. We happen to be in hunting season and wearing bright orange is kind of something that you just do if you can. And so um, the bright orange pack was the original reason I got this three years ago. I'll do a review on this. I'm, I'm already covering a little bit much. Uh, but within here is um, Acre. It also includes a tool roll in this pack. And so that's what's this. And I will be filling this and a couple of compartments in this pack. It's a 14 liter pack. They make a 10 liter as well. Um, it's got... Uh, so I'll be using, I'll be filling this and some, some side pockets in there um, uh, to transition over. And the reason really why I switched to this is I do layers and I do gloves and I usually carry a second set of gloves in case something gets wet or I need a little bit more insulation or less. And so this just has a cavernous, a cavernous um, uh, uh, compartment here in addition to the outer compartment that's like split here where I can put the tool roll and some other things. Um, but that's not what this is about. That's a, this is about this particular video is about getting the stuff that was in here and then in here over to uh, this pack. And this is the stuff. Uh, if you go back to the video uh, from April, man, there were people that were like, "Why do you carry all that, dude? What are you doing?" And you know what? Very constructive. I really appreciate the feedback. I do. Um, because you cared enough to comment, and I'll say it again, I'd rather have it and not need it than need it and not have it. So if you're taking a careful scan of this thing, one of these things was put in here as bait for those of you who are just dying to jump all over in the comments and go, 
dude, are you serious? And we'll get to that in a minute. But, you know, I threw it in for some humor. Um, so what definitely goes in the pack? What do I definitely carry on the trail? Um, since I switch over to this and it's seasonal and I got a couple of bikes or a few bikes, I've got my derailleur hangers actually happens to be a thing that does take up some weight and some space. This is for my SB55. This one's for my Reckoning. This is on my Chromag. This one's on my, I even wrote it down there. This one is on my Santa Cruz 5010. And this is the one that probably, that, uh, yeah, need to be happy I'm carrying. I just don't want to, like, fish in the bag and pull everything out and, or just, just carry the derailleur hanger for the bike I'm, I'm riding with. I want to just carry them all. So this one is for my, um, Trek Farley EX, uh, 9.8 fat bike. Sorry about the focus there. In addition, I've got, uh, in here, in here, I probably don't need the tape measure, but it doesn't really take up much. And when I'm riding other people's bikes, um, I do uh, get the saddle height set on the first on the first go when I've got that. Actually, this is a it, uh, uh, very lightweight and simple to use. Um, within here, I've also got chain links for 11 speed and 12 speed uh, because I ride both at the moment. And so with SRAM Eagle and XX1, and I got some quick links um, to just it's just you know first world problems, guys. But that's just you know. I'm acknowledging that. Uh, this is an easier to use than the chain tool that's built into the Crank Brothers uh, uh, tool right there. This is the uh, Lazine uh, Damselfly, and uh, it's it's uh, it works fine. I've already broken off one of the one of the teeth in there, but um, it still works. So I use this. This is nice and lightweight. That goes in this pack along with this guy, which is the my my Crank Brothers tool. Seen better days, but. It still works. I do need to take a wire brush to it, maybe put some mineral oil on it, and just uh, get rid of some of the uh, the oxidation. So there's that. That part goes in the pack. And then this guy, I got a couple of bikes that have the Float X2, Fox Float X2. And for those of you who have them, or if you're interested, it uh, this is just knurled on the edge. It gives you some um, gives you something to grip onto, but it's a whole lot easier to use than an Allen wrench. You have a six mil on one side and a three mil on the other, and that's for your compression and your rebound, high speed compression, high speed rebound, low speed compression, low speed rebound um, adjustments. So that's just a simple, you know, aluminum, lightweight piece of aluminum that also goes in the pack for some tuning. So that goes in there. Uh, coming down here, sorry, the focus keeps going in and out. This actually is one of those rather um, have it and not need it. So. A little bit of different stuff in here. There's a blister pack uh, for treating for, for treating blisters in here, but then I've also got various. This is the first aid stuff, so you, you know you would expect this, and it would might might stop there. There's ointment, and there's um, simple uh, band aids, but then you've got a little bit bigger band aid for really big, really big boo boos, and uh, then if things get really bad. I've got um, the suture, the, the the stitch, excuse me, the uh, the things that hold wounds closed. You can see I've already used it up here. I did have to use it on a buddy who who split um, his eyebrow, uh, that just the part right above his eye open, and had to close it up just to get him home. Um, and then a couple of a couple of pieces of uh, tagaderm uh, film, which uh, really help with um, with uh, uh, basic dressing wounds. So I carry that. Um, and the ointment. I just realized that I probably I probably need to put a couple of the alcohol wipes in here. So, just as good a reason as any to just do this uh, this pack this this repack. You know, at this time of year, as I make the transition, I do carry a, uh, a bottle of tubeless sealant. This is the Orange Seal Sub Zero um, stuff. I, I'm I'm reusing the bottle, um, and this stuff is this stuff's great. I've had to use it on my fat bike. And, um, uh, yeah, yes, it's a little big. Yes, it weighs, uh, something, but, <laughs> uh, if, if you need it or if some, a buddy of yours who hasn't been, uh, keeping after his tubeless sealant needs it, this is the ticket rather than tearing the, the bike apart on the trail and it's cold or it's cold and wet. And then you're trying to get, uh, the, the, you know, tubeless to stick again, or you're, uh, changing out a tube. 
so that works. Um, in here, um, I've covered this before. I'll be very brief. I've got uh, tire plugs. I've got three CO2s. I've got the inflator. I've got a uh, patch kit, a tire lever, and a derailleur cable, a replacement derailleur cable. So that's, that's what's in here. It's got some heft to it. Um, and that's probably the main the main thing that I get into when I'm out on a ride and having to change a flat. Um, we'll get into this is something I picked up in Moab. It is the lightest, as far as I know, the lightest uh, shock pump, a usable shock pump that I've ever seen. It's a Lazine shock drive. There's the name right there. And um, kind of clever. It's got a it's got a threaded. Let me see if I can get this. It's got a threaded uh, end there, so you can put the end of the hose uh, back into the handle, and it keeps everything keeps everything nice and together. So there's this piece, and um, since I've been riding the Yeti lately with the coil, I haven't needed it, but I do um, I do tend to carry this mostly when I'm doing some test and tune stuff, and as I move into um, the winter months and start to calibrate some of my settings for some of my bikes. Um, that are still running air. Um, this 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 will be the on trail. Um, I, I don't really tend to use these that much. I do have them. I do tend to use this more on friends' bikes uh, or new people I might be riding with who might need to make a shock adjustment. And you know maybe I'm just that guy. There's another guy I ride with who's also that guy where we've got basically the shed of stuff. Uh, but again, it's helpful. Okay. Blackburn over. Oops. Blackburn. Uh, mammoth uh, pump this thing so you say well you got all these co2s what are you doing with also a pump well it depends i'll use the pump when i've got the time to use the pump if i'm freezing and i'm cold and i'm wet then i'm using the co2s i buy them for like a buck a piece i get them on amazon through a uh one of these uh farm you know supply granger that kind of thing one of those kind of supply companies and everything's fine but uh when i can help it I'll just use the uh, I'll just use the uh, the Blackburn pump, and everything's good. And then you know when I when I'm out on the Yeti, of course I uh, I bring a spare spring in case I'm going to need one of those if I have a spring failure, and I bring one for the fork as well. So this is a 55 pound spring for my Olin's RXF, and uh, okay. So no, I'm just kidding. These things no, they don't go with me. I just did that just so uh, just to please the people out there who are going to look for something to pick on. And I, I realize I'm being a little snarky, um, but uh, again, you know, I'm going to run what I need to run or what I think I need to run. And in my experience, uh, uh, this is the kind of stuff that I've had to call upon in order to get myself home. You know, I'm out there, I'm on a schedule, I got, you know, family priorities, work priorities. I, you know, the worst thing for me is walking out of the woods when you could have helped yourself out through, uh, you know, just having the right equipment. The last two times I've had to walk out of the woods, it's because I didn't, it's, it's, it's not because of the lack of these things. I blew up a hub on my fat bike, uh, not once, but twice. Um, and actually, uh, Trek ended up warrantying after the second go a, a DT hub to replace uh, what was on there previously, uh, which I think was Bontrager's, whoever Bontrager's you know, house brand is for those kinds of things. Anyway, um, also a little bit of a switch here. I do, I do. Um, this, there's, there's some nutrition here I'll get to in a second, but these uh, rubber gloves for chain work, if, again, if I think I need it. I've also use these if I need a thin layer just to get my hands to warm up. Your hands will start to sweat after a while, but in the first uh, couple of, in the first 10 minutes or so of riding in really cold temperatures, I find that, you know, sliding these on and then putting on some uh, gloves um, does help to speed things up, but you can't leave them on too long because then your hands will sweat and then you've made matters worse. A couple of rubber bands, don't know what you need those for, and this is to answer the call of duty. Um, so just a, a small, not even a full pack of, uh, not even a full pack of Kleenex. All right. And then over here for longer rides, I, um, I'll, I'll get into some of this. So, uh, really longer rides for rides of three hours or longer, which tend not to happen in the winter. Um, um, I've got, I've got some of these bits. So I'm in the middle of, um, 
getting these things uh, drained so I can just refill them. Um, uh, I've got a hammer gel huckleberry right there. Shop blocks were provided by um, by my uh, by uh, the Chasing Epic folks when I did the BKXC trip with Chasing Epic uh, back in October, and then um, got some supplements here from from uh, from Hammer Nutrition, Endura lights for um, electrolytes, Race Cap Supreme, and the anti fatigue caps, which are fantastic for um, evacuating the ammonia uh, in your muscles. Um, this stuff here. I use it sometimes. I use it definitely on big rides, all day rides. I used it when I went out to Moab. I use it on trips. Um, I'll tend to use the gels um, when I'm not feeling very well, or um, you know, I'm kind of I'm kind of pushing myself, so just you know, using a little bit of boost of energy. But um, you know, these you know, one of these will end up in my pack when I when I go to repack. But the rest of this stuff will probably sit out. Maybe maybe I'll bring a jug of gel just to have um, for ready energy. So um, that's pretty much it. You know, I, I, I know it might look like a lot. I will point out that everything that you see here, in this piece here, this section here, um, was already in my hip pack race and was in the high above um, Cascadia um, pack. So, um, so a lot fits. Um, uh, the other thing that I can do is just, you know, I'll be using a hydration pack and I'll have an insulated line. And that's the other piece of it. Riding in the winter, I don't want my bottle to freeze. And so I've got to move from bottles to um, to a pack. All right. That was it. I know I went a bit long. Uh, hopefully that was helpful to you. Uh, leave a comment below. Let me know if uh, what you carry that I might not be carrying here. Uh, appreciate the constructive comments. Um, you know, let me know what you do. And... Uh, I'll see you again on another video. Thanks.